Today's challenge, get that dishwasher into that cupboard. So why am I doing this? My daughter wanted a dishwasher, but her kitchen is on the small side with no space for either a full size or slimline machine. She'd considered tabletop dishwashers, but didn't like the look of them. Limited capacity and using up valuable worktop space being the main criticisms. We looked at relocating the washing machine, already connected into the sink waste, but that created a whole host of other problems and added cost. In the end, we chose to adapt an existing floor cabinet, accepting there would be a loss of some storage space, but in the hope we'd gain enough space for a slimline machine. Hope you find it interesting. Let's get the door off first. Take both shelves out. I can get to one side of it with my fingers so that came off pretty easy but sometimes it's quite stiff so you may need to slide something in like that just to get behind to give you a little bit of leverage without damaging the front of the uh, unit. So as you can see Underneath the cupboard we've got some adjustable legs that provide support to the cupboard. Some on the left and some on the right. Now if I try and take the base out the whole cupboard may just sag in the middle. So what we're going to do is we're going to put some support pieces on the left hand side which will allow us to support the sink part of the cupboard. Take the weight there. That will allow me to take those legs out. And then on the right hand side, we're limited for space, so I may have to use some support pieces. So in good old Blue Peter fashion, here are two blocks that I made earlier. These are just some simple timber blocks and into each one I fitted an adjustable bolt. Uh, there's a hidden T-nut underneath the first block, which you can't see, into which the bolts are screwed. And what we can do is, using the adjustable spanner, we can turn the bolts and that will either lower or increase the height and that way we can support the cupboard underneath. So we've got the two blocks in position, adjusted the bolts, uh, put some packing pieces above the bolt pads to spread the load on the underside of the cabinet and that's allowed me to take out the first leg from this position here. There's still a leg at the rear so we don't need to do anything more and in fact, probably one of these blocks would have been enough, but I'd made two, so I may as well have used them. So the next steps are to take out the base piece and also some of these cross pieces. But in doing that, I will weaken the cabinet strength. So I'm going to put some brackets in, some metal plates in to support at this side, and also some work underneath. And we'll go through each step in turn. Before we do that however, I'm going to put a couple more screws into these now unused holes to join the two panels together, give some extra strength, both here and at the back, and also on the other side. Obviously when we're selecting the screws, we need to make sure that they're not going to go through and come out the other side. Screws are cheap, so I may as well put in a few. Now I'm using a hand ratchet screwdriver which some may say is old-fashioned but when doing work like this I quite like to use them rather than a big impact driver. So 
now I'm going to put a couple of spaces in temporarily between the very end panel and the floor. Oh, there we go. Just to give a little bit of support to the panel, to the floor. That should be enough, don't need too many. Whilst I work on taking this panel out. Before we take the bottom panel out, I'm going to put some brackets up here to secure the right hand panel to the underside of the worktop. That should give some strength and also avoid it splaying out. Now I've got some brackets in, might add a few extra screws later. Now we've got them in, uh, we can have a go at taking out the bottom panel. Now I've measured roughly where I think the securing bolts are to the side panels on both sides. So I'm going to cut around those and hopefully we can get the panel to drop out. Maybe that's a bit optimistic, we might, use it. might need to use a bit of a hammering, but we'll see how we go. Okay, the point of no return. Should really have my ear defenders on, but I haven't got them with me. Well, it certainly looks a bit of a mess at the moment, but we'll tidy it up and then we can move on. Okay, having got the base out, we can now take the back panel out. Okay, so probably not my finest work, but whoever installed the units originally didn't get them level, so they tilted down at the back. So I've had to cut away some of the underside of the worktop to give enough clearance to get the unit in. Reposition the brackets to raise them up a little bit to accommodate. But then I've been able to fit some fairly simple wooden supports underneath the inner panel. So both the inner and the outer panel have now got the weight of the unit. Now almost ready to install the dishwasher. 
Hopefully the laminate is level enough, we can accommodate a little bit of variation. So a bit of brushing up and then we'll try and get the unit in. And hey presto, it actually fits. Relatively smooth installing it. Still got the final connections, pipes and plug to sort out, but units in. I think that's uh, a tick in the box. Now the dishwasher's installed, it's just a matter of connecting the cold water feed and the drain outlet. Cold water feed at the back, drain outlet in the front. Almost the final step, trim the kickboard and refit it. So the original under sink shelf was a bit dubious, so I repurposed one of the shelves that came out of the cabinet. Shelf back in and the door back on, we're all done. So there we have it, one slimline dishwasher squeezed into a small kitchen. Thanks for watching, please like, subscribe and comment and look out for more videos coming soon.